In the vast timeline of our planet, spanning millions of years, there exists a chapter that tells the remarkable story of Homo erectus. This species, thriving between 100,000 and 1.6 million years ago, stands as one of the most enduring relatives in the human family tree. In today's episode, we'll uncover the secrets of Homo erectus, a species that mirrored us in many ways. Are you eager to find out about how they were discovered, what they looked like, how they compared to other species, and many more cool facts? Stay with us for a journey back in time as we unveil the extraordinary legacy of Homo erectus. Let's start with their discovery story. Picture being on Java Island in Indonesia, searching for fossils to understand early humans. That is what Eugene de Boy, a Dutch surgeon, did years ago. Du Bois spent years in Indonesia looking for evidence linking apes and humans. He eventually found a single tooth named Trinil 1, the top part of a skull, Trinil 2, and a thigh bone, Trinil 3. Together, these finds are often called the Java Man. Du Bois believed that the fossils he discovered belonged to an ancient and upright human and so coined the species name Erectus because of their combination of bipedality and brain size, which was much smaller than living humans. Other scientists dismissed this interpretation, preferring to emphasize its ape-like qualities. However, Du Bois' opinion was validated when a series of similar fossils were uncovered in China during the 1920s and 1930s. Now, here's a fun fact. The Zuccodian site in China, about 40 kilometers south of Beijing, has the most Homo erectus fossils found in one place representing about 50 individuals and 100,000 stone tools. Now, let's look at what Homo erectus looked like. As we said earlier, Homo erectus is the oldest known species to have a human-like body with relatively elongated legs and shorter arms than its torso. Although Java Man was the first Homo erectus discovery, the finding that has revealed the most about the species is Turkana Boy, found in Lake Turkana, Kenya. By studying the remains of this complete skeleton of the Tukana boy, scientists have concluded that Homo erectus walked and ran much the same way as we do. These individuals are comparable to humans today in terms of body size and shape, although they are more muscular and have much wider hips. Their adults grew to about 1.4 to 1.8 meters tall and weighed 41 to 65 kilograms. Homo erectus brain size was smaller than that of humans today in some cases, nearly half the size, and their skulls were thicker. Furthermore, early Homo erectus had smaller, more primitive teeth, a smaller body size, and skulls that were thinner and less strong than later specimens. The species also had a big face compared to us today. The heads were long and low, like Neanderthals. It wasn't round like ours, and their lower jaw didn't have a chin. Over the eyes, there was a notable brow line the brow ridge was the biggest in some Homo erectus, but is present in almost all ancient humans. Many people have different ideas about what the brow line is for. Most theories focus on its role as part of the skull that made it stronger or helped break up forces going through the skull. Recently, researchers said that the second possibility was not likely. They think that it might have played a part in social signaling between ancient humans by making friendly or hostile facial emotions stronger. Now, concerning the tools they used during this period, in other words, the technology of their day, Homo erectus was the first human species to make hand axes, Acheulean tools. These were very complex stone tools that were made on two sides. They were likely used for many things, like cutting up meat. Before that, the tools of early humans and their ancestors, like the first known Homo erectus tools found in Dimanisi, were much simpler. They were just rock flakes that had been honed into sharp edges. Homo erectus may have even been the earliest human relative to control fire. The use of fire is an essential milestone in human evolution, granting access to light, warmth, protection from predators, and the ability to cook food, each of which aids survival. Scientists don't know when humans were first able to make fire at will. Early humans probably captured natural fires and kept them alight for as long as they could. Evidence is relatively thin on the ground, but for example, researchers found evidence of ash and burnt bone fragments 
in a one million year old sediment layer in the Wonderwerk cave in South Africa. The site is too far inside the cave for the ash to be caused by a lightning strike and the spontaneous combustion of bat guano was ruled out. Concerning what their environment and diet were like, a lot of changes happened to China's climate while Zuccodian was occupied. Three cold glacial times with harsh winters were part of these changes. It cooled down and dried out during these glacial periods, making more open spaces with meadows and mixed steppes. Large grazing animals were more prevalent in these environments, and Homo erectus would have hunted them. On the other hand, it was warmer in Java around 1.6 million years ago when Homo erectus first lived in this area. The sea level may have been low enough for Indonesia to join the rest of Southeast Asia. Meals that Homo erectus ate have been found in some special places in China. These show that they ate a lot of meat, plant foods, and a diet similar to that of early modern humans. As for the relationship Homo erectus has with other species, more and more experts have changed the definition of Homo erectus so that it only includes fossils from East Asia. Many of the older remains from Africa that were once thought to be from Homo erectus have now been put into a different species called Homo ergaster. This species is believed to be related to Homo erectus. The redefined Homo erectus is now generally believed to be a single branch on our family tree, whereas Homo ergaster is now viewed as one of our direct ancestors. However, some scientists still believe that all of these specimens are actually Homo erectus and that the species has people with different physical traits that live in a lot of different places and times. Some people even question whether the two groups of Homo erectus in Asia are the same species. Before the 1950s, the remains from China were called Sinanthropus pekinensis, and those from Java were called Pithecanthropus erectus. Names like Peking Man, Java Man, and Solo Man were given to many of the first people that were found. In the 1950s, they were all put together into one species, which was called Homo erectus. On the one hand, some experts still think that fossils are from different species or subspecies, so they are called Homo pekinensis. Even if the populations in Indonesia and China were of the same species, it is now thought that they were not linked. Instead, the Chinese population arrived later than the Indonesian population and came from a different source. One key factor to take away is that Homo erectus represents a significant transformation from previous hominins, like the Australopithecus, to a species much more similar to modern humans. In many ways, modern humans are just an updated version of our Homo erectus ancestors. Now, you may be wondering, are we saying that Homo sapiens evolved from Homo erectus? Well, there are different answers to this but they mostly represent a difference in the use of names rather than a difference in view of human evolution. There is a rough idea that when and where humans evolved, which is shared by most writers in the field. The dominant theory today is that there were three major expansions of Homo out of Africa. The first is generally known as Homo erectus, the second as Homo heidelbergensis, and the third as Homo sapiens. The disagreement is on how many species or subspecies to group the various fossils into. Groups of highly qualified and respected scientists have widely different approaches to this. Regardless, Homo erectus are an important part of our history, living a long time ago in places like Indonesia and China. They were strong and looked a bit different from us with their big faces and strong brow lines. They made complex tools like hand axes and might have been the first to use fire their diet was varied and they adapted well to different weather and environments. Some scientists think that they were our direct ancestors, while others think they are more like our cousin species. Even though there's a lot we still don't know about them, we continue finding more evidence to piece together our ancestral family tree puzzle.